Hi there. Just a quick, um, I wasn't going to do another video today, but um, getting ready for winter here, and so we have a lot of power cuts in Bulgaria, so I usually make candles. So because I'm doing it, I thought, well, I know, I'll quickly, uh, I've done quite a few, but I thought I'd uh, share them as well. So <clears throat> in there, I've got uh, just an old pan, boiling water, and then I've got a pot inside um, that I've melted uh, beeswax. So you've got these little beeswax pellets. They smell gorgeous and um, it gives you a really lovely light and it also um, improves the atmosphere. When you burn paraffin or soy, even though soy is a sort of natural product, it's usually um, it, uh, changed. <coughs> chemically changed and I haven't got my drink um, it's usually chemically changed so uh, this actually um, it's like an ionizer when it burns so it, it improves the atmosphere a bit which is really good <coughs> so it, as I say in here I've got uh, mostly uh, beeswax and then I've got some uh, just regular candle wax here um, that I usually pop Every now and again, when I get low, I pop one of these in. <clears throat> now, the candles I'm doing is dipped. So what you do is you take a, a wick like this, um, and it's double the length that you want your candle. So my candles are going to be about that big, which is about nine inches long. Um, so I'm going to get two candles out of this. So you start off by priming the wick. Now this is really important part, so uh, you pop that into your wax. Uh, usually you have a, a pencil or something along that, and I can't show you, but what you do is you get loads of bubbles uh, coming through. That's uh, Some of it's where the wax is absorbing, but any moisture or anything that's in the wick is being uh, evaporated off. Um, so that will stay in there for about five minutes. Now, I won't leave that in there for five minutes now. Uh, i just start that off and go on to the next piece. So, these are quite easy. I usually have um, a load lined up and um, just continue dipping them. So, I've got one here. This is one that's uh, had about three dips now. So, we've got that, which is about three dips. And... All you do is, what it says, is you just dip that into the wax, out again, shake off the excess, and then dip it again straight away. Now, you can do four dips with this. So one, two, three, whoops, three, four, shake off the excess, until it stops dripping and then I just put it over a broom handle which I'll show you again I'll show you in a little minute so that's one I'll do a couple like that so this is another one one two three four There we are, that's that one done. And I'll move on to a, a thicker one now. So let's have a look. Let's do this one now. So this one now, that's about uh, 20 dips. When you first start off, the, th the thinner they are, obviously, when you dip them, they only take a very small amount of candle wax, <coughs> and wax from the pot. And um, as you build it up, each time you dip it in, they'll, you'll get a thicker and thicker result. So on this one, we go one. Two, three, four. Now I only do this sort of uh, once, once or maybe twice a year. These make brilliant presents as well. Um, beeswax candles are gorgeous, but you know a lot of you will know they're quite expensive to buy. So this way, you know, you can get yourself a kilo of 
of beeswax for about £10 on eBay. Whoopsie daisy. Oh no, hold on. That can happen. Just ease it apart gently. Smooth it over and then dip again. It will, it will soon cover over. There we are, I lost count on that one, but I think that'll be alright for that. Bit tricky, I don't normally do it sitting down. Now, here's one that's quite close to what I've just done. And this one now is is ready. So what all I've done is I uh, trimmed off the, the edge. Let's see if I can get a bendy one for you. <coughs> Let me look at this one here. Alright, so move that out of the way. Move the wax out of the way. Alright, so here we are. I'm just going to dip one in this time. So we do the four dips with just one candle. So we've got one, two, three. Now if I show you, if you have a look at the end, it's a little bit curved. So the wax is dry enough now, but it's warm. So if we put it in some greaseproof paper, and just roll, gently roll, and that straightens the candle. There we are. So I'm that's cooled down now, so I better dip this one as well so they're even. One, two, three, four. There we are. There we are, and that's uh, dry now. I think that's uh, all right. So we'll put that on our uh, tray. So I'll just give that a couple of seconds to do. So here's the um, one that I sort of primed earlier. So I'm just going to show you now how easy it is to start off. Um, so you can see these, are, you know, it's quite bendy. Got wasp in here now. So we do one, two, three, four. Right. So when um, that stopped dripping, just pull that straight. There we are. And we'll put that back on the stick. And then that will dry um, straight and then we can continue dipping there. Now, another thing is with the dipped candles, you um, you find that the larger they are, the quicker the uh, depth goes down. So as it goes down, what I usually do is I add half a block of the regular wax. I won't do it now, because um, I'll do some of the uh, larger ones while it's quite empty. <coughs> 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 Because obviously the volume of this, when you dip it into the wax, it will raise it to the top. So, you know, for this candle, that is, um, that's still deep enough. Done that again on my hair. It's quite tricky actually doing it with, uh, for the camera. <laughs> I get along quite quickly when I'm, uh, when I do this, um, sort of in the other room in the kitchen. Uh, and then number four. There we are. So, let that just dry off a touch. Let that dry off a touch, right? And I'll bring this over so I can show you 
So that's what I've got so far. So you can see towards this end, I've got all my cans lined up. And then towards this end, these are the ones that are sort of just started a little bit less. So, and then I just hook that onto a book just to, um, just to wedge it up really, uh, keep them sort of, you want it quite thick because obviously you've got to think of the candle light at either side. So just make sure that um, they don't touch each other because you saw what happens there. Although when you do shake it and you remove the excess wax, once it starts drying for a few seconds, they won't stick together. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to get them um, all misshapen. So I'll just do a few more just to show you and then I'll explain what I do afterwards. One, two, whoops a daisy, one, two, three, four. And these should see me through the winter then. So we can see this one's a little bit curly. You can actually do it with your fingers if you don't want to bother with the, the grease proof. Because once you get the weight behind it, you will find that they lie sort of straighter anyway. There we are. Right, so as I say, um, obviously with the depth of the candle, you need a deep container to hold your wax. Now, once you get to a couple of inches below, you're left with quite a lot of wax. So what I usually do is I have some of these moulds um, all whipped up ready. So the wick that I've used for this, it's um, slightly bigger than the wax for the, for the dipped candles. Um, I've primed these wicks by leaving them in the wax for five minutes. Um, and then that helps so that when you come to pour, um, you get that, uh, uh, you know, the wax, the wick burns better. Because um, if you use the, the wick that's just like a plaited cotton, if you use that without priming it, you find that the, um, the it doesn't burn as well. That's why it's always best to prime that wick with the wax that you're using. I won't say about sizes because it depends what wax you're using. Um, when you're using beeswax, you need a slightly bigger wick than if you're using paraffin or soy. Um, so they are different, but there's lots of, uh, on Google, you can Google that and it gives you the thing for that. So then, as I say, I'll just do some pillar candles afterwards. So I've got two sizes of those. So, and that's easy. You just literally pour and fill, leave it to cool. And you find that, uh, you get a little dip. That's because when you heat the wax, it expands. So when it, uh, cools down, it contracts a bit. So you get like a a little U shape in there and you can just top that up because this this in effect will be the bottom of your candle. Um, you know it's done so that's the top. That's the top of your candle and that's the bottom. I just use a pencil because it helps me centralise the wick. So that's what I'm doing today um, or this morning. Um, so I just thought as it was all set up I thought it'd be quite a bit of fun to just show you <laughs> What else I get up to? It's not all um, cards, but it's all crafting. Uh, but just uh, different, different crafts. As I say, these make fantastic um, gifts. You know, a box of uh, six candles or four candles, or <coughs> you know, just um, a nice gift for Christmas. These make lovely gifts for Christmas. With the beeswax, I don't put any scents in at all because. Um, it's got such a lovely uh, scent on its own that I don't think it's you'd need to add any scent. It's a shame to get rid of the uh, gorgeous honey. It's sort of like a lovely honey smell. Um, it, beeswax, you know, it's it's just a gorgeous smell, really relaxing, um, and it does make lovely presents. And decorate, you know, to decorate as well, you know, with your tissue paper, um, or your, you know, get your tissue paper, stamp on colour onto it and then put it onto the candle and then you've got a lovely personalised candle. So that's all for now. Um, so I'll pop this on my YouTube channel and uh, hopefully you'll take a look. Alright then, take care. Happy crafting.